Okay, so then let's uh, discuss together. So, gang so B. Kim Soyeon. What is mediation? What do you do to mediate? How do you mediate between your father and your mother? Talk to them privately, separately, or together? Together at the same time. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Kim Sok Yong? Yes. What, what makes a good mediator? Good at mediating? Okay, so, anyway, on Thursday's class, you're going to get the chance everybody will practice doing some mediation. So, you can. Today, we'll talk about that in the video. So, we have three main types of mediation. The first one is facilitative. What does facilitate mean in English? It's a little bit like help. It's a useful word, right? Facilitate somebody means you allow them to, to do their best, right? So facilitating means helping the other people to do their best. So facilitative. So the goal of the mediator is to facilitate conversation. Maybe the two people can't talk because they're very angry or they're using a lot of negative language, right? So the mediator can help them to take away the emotion, right? And facilitate, help the conversation, discussion and negotiation to reach a settlement, okay? The next one is evaluative. The mediator does, always does this part, even in this one, but they add something. They are going to give an evaluation and provide certain expertise. So they're going to give, they, are an ex, they know about the area, so they're going to make a suggestion. Like the arbitrator makes the suggestion, but the difference is binding and non-binding. Which one is binding? Mediator, non-binding. They don't have to accept it. Okay? Transformative is relatively new. This was in the past 20 years ago. These two were just two, but nowadays we have a newer one called transformative. This means to transform the relationship between the two parties. 
So, for example, one party has no power. So you are going to help the other person to have more power. Or somebody doesn't, they don't feel comfortable, they can't say their opinion. Okay? So we're helping that person to, to give their opinion or help them to say their emotions. <coughs> so, which one of these do you do with your parents? Are you facilitating, evaluating, or trying to transform? You want to trans transformative? Okay. Do you have any question about these three types? <coughs> so here's an example of transformative mediation. The US Postal Service. <coughs> they have 800,000 workers. 1997, they had 14,000 formal complaints with Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. So their workers were complaining about them to the government, right? Commission. So they started to use transformative mediation for these complaints. So they resolved over 17,000 informal disputes. This led to 30% drop in complaints. They saved millions of dollars in legal costs and improved productivity. And 90% of the disputants were satisfied with the process. Okay, 90% is repeated. So, this is a company which decided, instead of having litigation, right, or instead of having arbitration, it's better to use the process of mediation. So we're talking about deciding what process is best Right? So they decide when we have a complaint from our employees, we're going to use the mediation first to solve the problem just by ourselves. Okay? Transformative mediation. So let's have a look at one of those cases that they did. Just one case. So they had a female employee. She was a letter carrier, so carrying the letters from place to place for delivery. She complained against about her supervisor. He always called her by her number instead of her name, root number. Do you understand root number? So maybe she did some root for delivering the letters, right? Yes. Each root has a number. So she was maybe 156. So instead of calling her name, he called her number. Just 156, come here. Right? Would you like if I call you by your number? <laughs> 116046. Can you answer the question? <laughs> Would you like that? No? no? What's the problem? What's the problem? It's like a criminal. Sounds like a criminal. So she wasn't very happy, okay? So they had a mediation. She could express her feelings. Before, she might have been too shy or didn't want to cause a problem with her boss, her supervisor, right? So she didn't say anything. But in the mediation, she was allowed to express her feelings. And then he realized that he calls everybody by their number. Okay? And he didn't think that people found this offensive. So he thought that was okay. But because of this transformative mediation, he started greeting people personally by their name instead of their number. Because he understood about the problem. He apologized for his past conduct and the employee withdrew the complaint. So in this case, the employee didn't want to talk to her supervisor directly about the problem, right? Because she thought she could get into trouble or be a bad influence on her rating or so on. So her other option was behind his back, without him knowing, to make some complaint to the government organization okay, about this kind of treatment at work. So instead of that, because the company has a mediation system, she can ask for the mediation, and then during the mediation they can help her and him to understand each other well, better than if they just do together negotiation, and they can solve the issue. Okay? Do you have any question about that example of transformative mediation? Do you think that's a good idea? In this case, it worked well for the company, bringing in this new process. 
Okay, so we're going to watch a video about mediation. So just like with arbitration, this is a little bit shorter. It takes about 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, you are going to do mediation, so I think you can learn the vocabulary from this. You can learn by watching the mediator. What does the mediator do and what do they say? Their body language. What's their body language like? We can learn about the structure, the process of the mediation. How, what do we do at the start, in the middle, at the end? So it's a dispute between a company called CompuPlast and PM Limited. CompuPlast has agreed to provide robotic software to PM. Do you have a robot? Yes. A real robot? Or a toy robot? Toy. Ah, really? Why don't you throw it away? <laughs> hmm? I have a robot at home. Cleaner. Robot vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Very useful. The robot doesn't have to have arms, right? <laughs> if it's going to clean the floor, it doesn't need arms on the mop. It can be just a circle. So, however, it looks like the delivery date will be delayed. So PM is very upset because PM produces door handles for the car industry. Do door handles use robotics? Do you have an old door handle? Do you remember the old door handle? You just all pull the thing. Does that use robotics? No. And what about the modern car? Do they use robotics in the door handles? If you press the button, does the door open? Um. Yes. So they use some robotics for the car handles. So the PM Limited is making door handles for the cars. So for example, they're working for Kia, right? If, they, if this is delayed, they're going to lose a lot of business. So they built the car, they have, everything is finished, but they're just missing some part for the door handle. So they're not very happy and they'll lose business. So they cancelled their, they cancelled their contract with CompuPlast because CompuPlast was late delivering. So both sides have threatened to sue, to go to court. CompuPlast said you can't cancel the contract like that. Okay, so can you understand the problem? So we're going to answer these questions about the video. How does mediation, how is it different from negotiation? What type of mediation is this video? Evaluative, facilitative or transformative? And how would you rate the mediator on 1 to 10? Also we'll stop during the video and uh, you can write down some useful question or phrase that you can use as, later as a mediator. Okay? So then, if you want, you can follow on your computer. We you already know the Coursera website, right? You already signed up here. So it's here in under week five, and then mediation. Sure, you'll we'll look at a look. And PM Limited is very upset, perhaps even in your is just one snag. The latest computer software needed to make the robot work hasn't arrived at the factory, PM Limited. The software designers and suppliers, CompuPlast, have failed to meet a deadline, and their failure is leading to enormous financial difficulties, both for PM Limited and for the car company, which needs the door handles. Indeed, CompuPlast themselves have a lot to lose. Once again, it looks like a dispute heading for court. Thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of pounds in mitigation costs and the breakdown of a hitherto friendly and profitable business relationship. But does it have to... So litigation, he said, will cost hundreds of thousands of pounds and will break down the relationship. Okay? Before they had a good relationship. Do you like this? Even as the lawyers are treading their expensive path up courtroom steps, they know that there's a chance that the matter will be settled out of court. But in the meantime, costs for their clients have risen, sometimes frighteningly so. And that is no good to anyone. A financially undermined client is never a happy one. If you're a lawyer, then you might think, well, my client has contractual rights that need to be upheld. If that means going to court, so be it. After all, costs might be recoverable down the line. But increasingly, that attitude is not being accepted by clients. They want to know if there are other ways of ensuring that they don't lose out, and if there's a way of keeping a business relationship going rather than find relationships so soured by the litigation experience that a previously happy business partner now finds himself permanently a dagger's draw. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where ADR comes in.
Let's consider the disputes involving the robot, a plastics manufacturer, PM Limited, the computer software firm, Compuplast, and a car company. Because of the delayed arrival of software, this robot isn't able to produce enough car door handles to satisfy the contractual arrangements entered into by PM Limited. They promised to supply the handles within a week. Because of Compuplast's failure, PM has cancelled a half million pound order for more software from Compuplast, a move which could mean the end of the company. I'd like to thank you all for coming this morning to help to try to resolve this dispute. My name is Elizabeth. Compuplast has asked the mediator, Elizabeth Rivers, to see it as an alternative solution to this dispute, one that won't lead to enormous litigation costs, and one which will help all parties reach a satisfactory solution. While their decision has led to round table talks between PM and Compuplast, both of whom have brought along their lawyers. By watching this mediation process, you'll see exactly how ADR works. Elizabeth, a London lawyer, is a trained mediator. Her brief is simply to try to enable the two sides to reach a solution. The two sets of lawyers have been asked long to ensure that neither PM nor Compuplast make a legal fool of themselves. Let's follow the action. Now, I understand that um, your lawyers have um, sent to seed and signed a mediation agreement. I'd like just to clarify what my role is here today. Firstly, I want to stress that I'm not here to impose any sort of solution upon you, and I have no authority to make any sort of binding ruling. This is your dispute. I'm simply here to help you to try and arrive at your own solution and to facilitate communication between you. So what is she doing at the start? She noticed that they, their decision doesn't have a binding influence. Right, she's explaining her role. Maybe they're not sure what the role of a mediator is. Okay, so it's voluntary. Mediation is voluntary. The process is entirely voluntary. You can leave at any time if you're not happy. And it's non-binding unless and until an agreement is reached. I'd like to explain a little bit about the procedure which we'll adopt this morning. Firstly, each party will have the opportunity to make a, a statement of their, their position, and they're permitted to do that without any interruption from the other side. And I'd like to ask you to, to hear one another out and, and not interrupt while the opening statements are being made. At the end of those statements, I will then attempt to summarise what you've said to me. After that, we'll break up into private meetings where I'll speak you each individually with your legal representatives. And those meetings are an opportunity for you to speak to me as frankly as possible and in confidence about your concerns about this dispute. Shortly, the two sides will speak separately. That's the structure that she explained, two, two steps that she's going to do. What's first? You're going to follow these steps too, so you can write them down when you do your mediation. First step and second step. What was the first step? So it's called an opening statement, right? That's this kind of a formal word that we use in the court. Do you understand statement? Opening statement. Each side does the opening statement. Okay? Opening statement means no interruption. The other side can't interrupt. What was the second point? They can't interrupt with each other. Yes, they, in the opening statement they can't interrupt. But what are they going to do next after the opening statement is finished? Discuss about it. Yes, but how? So she's going to talk privately to both sides. Why is it an advantage to talk privately with both sides? What's the advantage of talking to them privately? Do you understand privately? Separately? What's the advantage of that? You can get some extra information that they're not going to tell her in front of the other side. So if you remember the zone of possible agreement, they could tell her their last price they're willing to accept. 
right? And then she can make the Zopa. Then she can be aware of the Zopa. So they will tell her some information which they won't tell when the other side is in the room, like reservation price. So the kind of vocabulary she says, here she explains, she'll see each person individually. With your legal representatives. And those meetings are an opportunity. So you can say this kind of thing when you're the mediator. But this private me meeting is an opportunity for you to speak to me you to speak to me as frankly as possible. As frankly, and you understand as frankly, British English means honestly. Okay? And in confidence. You understand in confidence? So you can say that if you're the mediator. You can write down that phrase, you can use it. This is an opportunity for you to speak to me frankly and in confidence. Okay? Honest frankly means directly. You can say what you want. In confidence means I'm not going to tell the other people. It's private. Privately. In confidence about your concerns about this dispute. Shortly, the two sides will speak separately to the mediator in so called caucus meetings, which are entirely confidential. But first, the opening statements. As country pastor for Courtney and his mediator, I suggest that Ms. Carter make her first opening presentation. Okay. Right, um, well, country Plast is a small uh, computer company. We produce computer software in the in the plastic moulding industry. Last year we were approached by PM, Mr. James, and asked to design a programme of software to enable him and his company to speed up the robot-controlled plastic moulding system. And at considerable expense to us, we did design a range of software that could do this, and it seemed set to revolutionise the industry. On the strength of this success, PM have come back to us and asked to design more new computer software. But they also came back and asked us to modify the original software, which we agreed to do. They set us a deadline, which unfortunately, due to unforeseen business circumstances, we can't reach. Now PM are threatened to withdraw their orders for the software. Should they do that, we've got no option but to sue. Our investment was based on their orders. Do you understand sue? What does sue mean? Huh? Yes, so sue the other side, they broke the contract, I'm going to go to the court to get compensation. But she says they have no option but to go to the court. We think we'll succeed in an action against PM. She thinks they'll win. We know that we can provide the modified software they want, but we need more time. Because PM asked for those modifications, it's their fault there's a delay and not ours. We think that it's all PM's fault. So what's our main point? Changes, right? Yes. They made some changes. Modif do you understand modification? Yes. Modification is kind of formal way to say change for our business or companies, right? Somebody will ask you, can I can you make some modification? Okay? Modification means change, but it's more for business or manufacturing. Okay? So look at this question she asks next. Would you like to? Is that polite or not polite? Right, so you notice the mediator is using polite language. Would you like to make your presentation? Instead of saying to that person, now you make the presentation. Right? Would you like to make your presentation? Or British, this is in Britain, so British people are a little bit more polite in their way of speaking than in the US. Mr. Jennings, would you like to make your presentation now? Yes, certainly. We're a plastic moulding company producing parts of the automotive industry. Quite recently we won a very large contract to supply major car producers outside door handles. We gave a contract to company to design the software for this system. They totally failed to meet the deadline. This means we cannot supply parts to our customer. The result of all... What does it mean to fail to meet the deadline? They're late. They're late, right? Deadline is another important word we can see in the business, right? Or in the dispute. They didn't make the deadline. fact that 
First of all, we'll certainly lose the current contract. It's doubtful we'll ever get a contract again from our customer. And thirdly, the worst case, they will probably take us to court and sue us. This is a result totally of complete blasting, confidence and inability to meet the deadline. Our position is quite clear. With cancelled orders of software and complete blast, there's no guarantee that they will meet future deadlines. Furthermore, we'll take complete blast of court on the basis of a clear breach of contract. They must know this position they're in is quite serious and their abject failure is placed in an intolerable position. Thank you for those presentations. I'd now like to have a caucus with CompuFast, so perhaps Mr James and your lawyer, Mr Barra, could step outside and wait till you join the room. I hear she could say, perhaps you could, right? Perhaps you could, again asking somebody very polite way, so perhaps you could step outside and wait for a minute, okay? The mediator has heard CompuPast's public position. She understands that posture, but how privately do they assess that position? In your opening presentation, you said that you would be able to provide the software, but simply that you couldn't provide it within the deadline set by the year. Realistically, how quickly do you think you can provide it? We can look at this kind of question, right? Realistically, how quickly do you think you can provide the software, right? What kind of question is that? The mediator is asking the, the lady. It's a probing question. Do you remember we studied about probing questions before? So important job of the mediator, ask probing questions. If you can't see, well, you can put down this screen. Right? Uh, so, here's this word, like, realistically, right? What is the situation at your plant? Realistically, how quickly do you think you can provide the software? So she's getting the information with probing question. She's going to write that. Well, probably uh, within 10 days of the deadline, I would think. Yeah. But we could probably produce it within the deadline if we had some more help, if we could employ more staff. But I also must counsel you that really we have to be cautious about time deadlines until we're quite sure of the work involved. You know, we feel that we've, we've gone out of our way to help them. And if they want us to meet this new deadline they've issued us with, then they've got to help us. Yes, I think we haven't actually reached that deadline yet. And really, uh, Ms. Carson has been very good by advising them the problems before they actually take place. And we'd hope that we might get a better hearing and a little bit more tolerant. Yes, but Mr. Right. James was very emotive um, you know, in, in, in his approach, and uh, that was a little bit distressing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I certainly we didn't expect it. He was distressed because the other guy was too emotive, he said. Emotive is like, he means to say angry or annoyed or a bad attitude, right? And to and automatically threaten to sue us. It was very, it was, I, I think they went completely into the door. Yeah. We, we hope that he him. would actually help us help him. Right, well, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you think you can meet the deadline. So again, we're analyzing what the mediator says. So she says, I'm pleased to hear that you think you can meet the deadline, right? So she gives some feedback. I'm happy to hear this, right? Active listening. That's active listening. Do you understand active listening? Words like right or giving some adjective when the person says something. That's interesting. That's great. Um, you mentioned that you would need assistance from the end. Can you be more specific about precisely what you would need? Another question here. Can you be more specific about what you need? Okay, probing question. So you might use these questions when you're the mediator. Will you remember or are you going to write down? You remember very good memory? Hmm? Yes, you're still young. Just 21, so your memory is very clear. You can remember easily. I don't remember unless I write down. So you can ask this question, could you be more specific about it? Okay? Let's look at that probably in question. Can you be more specific about something? Do you understand specific? Can you tell me more or give me more details? Well, I'll talk to you about this, Nick. I mean, really, the, our problem is, and I would prefer that you didn't disclose this to them, is that we actually need money to employ someone. We just haven't got sufficient money to 
time to, able, to be able to employ the sort of person that we need at such short notice. We just, we just haven't got it. So if we're going to be able to meet this deadline, then we need some help financially to employ the quality of staff needed to produce this software. So we might even need two people. So we're talking at least 25 now. Found out that she needs two people, it costs twenty-five thousand pounds. Okay? To meet the deadline. So to summarise, without any extra assistance, you think you could provide the software, but it would be ten days after the deadline which is currently being set. Mm -hmm. However, if you were able to employ additional staff, you think you could still meet the deadline. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the funds. I'm correct in saying you don't actually have the funds at the moment to employ yeah. um, additional staff, so you would need some sort of injection of cash mm -hmm. to do that, and you'd be looking in the region of twenty-five thousand pounds. Yeah. Right. Right. So you see, the mediator is sums up, right? She listens, writes down, sums up to check that she understands them properly. Okay, so checking understanding. Is there any way that PM could help you with your cash flow, for example, by making some sort of accelerated payment? So now she's making some suggestion, right? <coughs> is there any way that, this is another useful phrase, is there any way that we can do this? Is there any way you could do that? Is it possible to do this? That's also useful for framing questions. Okay? If you ask just, can you do this or can you do that, people might say yes or no. But if you say, is there any way you can do this? It's not a yes or no answer, okay? It's a more open question. They can think and, and discuss. Well, I think, I, yes, they, they certainly could. If they could give us 25,000 now, then, then we'd, be, we'd be happy with that. And then the remaining payment at the end of the year. But we're at the deadline, yeah. Can I confirm with you that I'm authorised to disclose that to PM? Yes, I don't think that would prejudice our position. Well, she checks, she can say it 